All right, Chewbacca here. It is Monday, February 26th. It's 9.40 a.m. Getting a later start today than I thought I was going to. Um, didn't sleep that great at this cave lodge place. Uh, the bed was just all right. Um, the walls are really thin, the insulation sucked. Well, there was no insulation, so it sucked. Uh, so it was kind of cold and there's a lot of uh, animal noises. So literally roosters going like all night. <laughs> um, so a little trouble, a little, little hard to sleep. Uh, so I just kind of let myself lie there until I felt okay. Because uh, I don't want to be on the road falling asleep while on a motorbike that I have just recently figured out how to drive. So um, anyway, today I have a, a long journey back to Chiang Mai. It's probably a, from where I am now, I'm guessing it's about four, three, four hours on a motorbike since I'll be going a little slower, um, possibly five. It's 9.41. Uh, I was hoping to get back in time to do a full day of work. Maybe update that goal <laughs> to get back in time for a half day of work. Uh, or maybe just work late tonight. But, um, yeah. I mean, this has been really cool. I'm glad that I took this little detour. Uh, the cave was, was pretty worth it. And uh, driving on a motorbike and getting experience with that has been really fun. Even on my beautiful pink motorbike. Because um, that's just how I roll. Hehe. <laughs> Um, yeah, so if I see anything interesting on the way, maybe I'll stop, but otherwise, uh, today is just a day of like hopefully not dying. Um, I have heard a few horror stories, but uh, I'm being careful and I think I know what to look out for, so should be okay. Made a stop here, this little stand area, it's called like an OK Mart or something, uh, about halfway. Chiang Mai probably. Looks like I'm still an hour and a half out, uh, but I've made it halfway through the mountain pass road. I think the last probably half hour of this drive is just along a highway in Chiang Mai, which will also be an interesting experience on a motorbike, but um, so far this has been fine. I think uh, I, can, I can see why this would be difficult um, for some people. Uh, you know, there's like two things you, I feel like you need to look out for on the road here. One is Basically, when you're on two wheels, uh, there's a lot of slip risk on the far left of the road because that's where all the debris is. You have gravel, sand, uh, leaves, all that stuff kind of collects on the left side of the road. At the same time, you also have this concern that uh, drivers who are coming up the other side of the, the road are going to basically use half or more of your lane to pass someone who's going slowly. Uh, so you're kind of playing this game where you don't want to be too far left because you can slip um, and you also don't want to be too far right. Uh, but so far it hasn't been a huge issue, I think. Um, for the most part, it's just, you know, you see a lot of cars so just kind of slow down, be predictable, and you let them pass you. And you just don't, don't let yourself get flustered or feel rushed down this thing, and it's all right. Not a terribly big deal, and my brakes have not failed yet, so uh, that's also a huge plus. So, hoping to find some gas here at this stop and then continue on my way to Chiang Mai. Get some lunch, some coffee so I don't fall asleep on a motorbike. Though I think that's less likely because it's it's pretty exciting, you know, you just got like a lot of wind exposure and I think it's hard to not feel kind of awake. and. Uh, I guess maybe a little bit alive doing this. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's worrying. Perhaps I'm on my way to becoming a uh, motorcycle accident statistic. But this has been cool so far, so I'm really glad that I'm doing this. Ah. I survived! Back in my room. Much excite. That was a lot of fun. Maybe a little on the long side. And uh, I did end up doing some highway driving. I think I might have gotten a little overly bold. <laughs> uh, probably driving that motorbike a little faster than I think I see the locals doing it, so I just need to not get too cocky here. Um, also, driving in the city sucks because the like stop-and-go traffic is like 
really painful on a motorbike. Just not, not fun. Uh, and I got lost a couple of times because I didn't realize I needed to, make, needed to make turns places. So I took probably an extra 20 minutes to get home. But I survived, all limbs intact. Uh, I'm not gonna show my legs and feet on camera because uh, I'm a lazy cameraman. So you'll just have to take my word for it. I'm not paralyzed and I'm moving. Cool. Well, I need to get work done now after a nice long shower. <laughs> All right, I am showered, feeling good, feeling rested. Uh, that was exactly the adventure that I feel like I needed. And I'm um, ready to get back to work, so I'm gonna motorbike over to one of my favorite coffee shops. And I'm thinking about maybe, since I have the motorbike till 2 p.m. tomorrow, maybe going to Doi Soutet for the sunset. If I don't do that, then I'll try to do the sunrise. Yeah, have to kind of see how the work session goes. Um, yeah, I'm like almost to the point where I'm like, wow, because it's like 3.45 p.m. right now, like, wow, maybe I should just forget about being productive today, but I'm gonna go try. I was up dropping my uh, pun space in 1Q, an event about growth marketing. Just wanted to uh, take some video of the space. It's a nice space. Been thinking about coming back here. I haven't actually worked here yet. It's about 300 baht a day. It's not cheap, but it is nice. It's a little further from where I, uh, I live, so I, I came out today because I have a motorbike for the day. Makes it easy. Lots of space to work, lots of desks. Very quiet normally. So Pun Space was by the North Gate, and uh, every night near the North Gate, they have this little market here. This is actually where I came on my first night in Chiang Mai after that 40-hour nightmare of a transit. Um, came here with my roommates, and uh, didn't actually record anything from that, but it was delicious. Lots of really great food here, all very cheap. I think I spent probably like, I actually spent like 300 baht that day on, on dinner. Um, and at that point, I was still like, oh my god, I got so much food for so cheap. Now I'm like, wow, 300 baht is a lot to spend. Um, but you can really, you can eat pretty well at a place like this for, even for like 50 baht, you'll leave, you'll leave pretty, pretty well off. If you want to ball out, you can go 80, 100. Um, I'm thinking maybe one of these smoothie things. And uh, they also have really good, um, uh, pork leg over rice here. There's this like uh, lady with a cowboy hat that everybody everybody raves about. I was here. It's pretty good. Um, kind of reminds me of a uh, Taiwanese dish, or I guess maybe just Chinese. I'm not sure. My my mother and my grandmother used to make it. It's uh, called tipang. Uh, it's like uh, slow roasted pork in uh, some sort of like star anise and like soy sauce marinade or something like that um, but anyway it was close by so I thought I'd come back enjoy some food here and uh, just fill up before I go home and do more work <laughs> starting with a smoothie as I walk around though um, something that she did that I found kind of off-putting was uh, she uh, they had these little displays with fruit and normally I find them they, they like will peel the fruit and then, like, throw it in the blender. She just took the display and threw it in the blender, which uh, makes me wonder how long that fruit had been sitting there, but it's okay, it tastes all right. The cowboy hat lady, they do one thing here and they do one thing really well, and that's just that pile of pork legs over there, with rice, uh, and a really delicious, like, hard-boiled, I actually think it's soft-boiled egg 